Hello, my name is Justin Yomark, and welcome back to the CNC Podcast. This week, I have my friend Dylan. Hello, everyone. And so, this week, we are going to debate who had a better 2020 season and kind of who has a better future between Kyle Lewis and Luis Roberts. And That's so, I, I'm i defending Kyle Lewis as he is on the manager of my second favorite team, while Dylan will be defending Luis Roberts as... He is a White Sox fan. Mm-hmm. So let's get on into it. Uh, you can start with your first point. All right. Uh, I am a White Sox fan, as Justin's a Mariners fan, so I can't really root against Robert. I think the numbers he put up for the first half of the season, if he would have continued putting that up, I think he would have pulled through and won Rookie of the Year. And maybe if there was an All-Star game, he maybe would have made it, but – his slump at the end, he was like five for 75 on like the second half of the year. And it, it was really bothering to watch him play through that. And we, I mean, we know he'll come back from that and play better next year, but it was tough to watch him play like that. Mm-hmm. And you say he may have won rookie of the year. Um, let's say he played better. Let's say he hit for a 250 average in that second half. I still feel like Kyle Lewis would have won it as he was constantly up in the top five of total hits in the a- in the AL. Mar- what did the Mariners finish as the record? Were they 500 um, or no? I, they were under 500. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think if the Mariners were like over 500 and like maybe made the wild card, I think that would have definitely like put Kyle Lewis over the top to win it. But I just feel like also, like, being able to make the playoffs definitely has a little bit of bias towards, like, putting you towards an award. Like, I feel like you have a better chance of winning an award if your team makes the World Series rather than being the worst team in the league, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. But then that begs to differ. Did Luis Robert really, was he the leader of that team? Which, in my opinion, is no. Jose Abreu was as he won MVP, which I think was well-deserved. And then in Kyle Lewis's case, no, he wasn't in the MVP talks, but he was also the best player on his team. Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I mean, they've got such a good lineup where they can have Robert batting any spot in the lineup, two, seven. I mean, they've got so many guys, and over the next few years, it'll just be really interesting to see how it plays out. Mm-hmm. And then the Mariners, I, I definitely feel like they have a great young team. I mean, they have two top five prospects. And so both in the office, so they're gonna, I think the Mariners, when they call up Julio and I believe it was Brandon who was the other one, when they call them up and have them in the outfield with Kyle Lewis, they will definitely have the best outfield in the league. Yeah, in like, it'll be in like seven it'll be years mm-hmm. with a prime Kyle Lewis. Julio, who will be about 26, and Braden, who I believe, again, will be about 26 as well. Yeah. I I mean, I still personally think Kyle Lewis had a much better rookie year and will continue to be better, though. Yeah, I mean, we'll see how it plays out. I mean, Robert, I think he's just more of, like, he just like, kind of, like, puts out, like, really, like, special plays. Like, you know, he's a huge guy. I think he's, like, 6'5", maybe. And he's able to get huge home runs. And I, I think, you know, that's what people like to see. That's what, like, kind of, like, makes them will be fun to watch, seeing, like, guys like Aaron Judge, like, hit, like, huge 400-foot home runs. I feel like Robert can do that and be, like, kind of, like, a fan favorite and start to, like, like make fantastic plays in the field, be a good hitter. So hopefully he can really produce to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, like – I agree. I think – I definitely think he can be a fan favorite, but I feel like Kyle Lewis can do that as well. I mean – I mean, if you looked at him play, like, he was making play after play. Like, he is one of the more fun players to watch. I mean, he posted a 1.7 war in only 60 games on one of the worst teams. is impressive. He has 28 RBIs. Again, With he's not getting a ton of players in on base when he comes up. So, again, that's impressive to see him still get nearly 30 RBIs, which is about one every – it's about one in every two games with a bottom five team. How old is Kyle Lewis? Uh, I don't know his age off the top of my head. I think I want to say he's 20. 20, okay. I mean, oh, um, I think he might be 24. Okay, I, I think Robert's like 23, but I mean, it was interesting because he could have also gotten called up Robert in 2019. He went from 
he went from single A 2019, I think was his first year in the minors. And he, he started in single A and finished in triple A. And they were going to call him up with Kopech in August. And maybe that would have been interesting to see, but I definitely think towards the end of the year, he could have benefited from, uh, from maybe going sit on the bench for a few games, but it's good to let like the players ride it out in their slumps. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kyle Lewis is 25 and, 25. Okay. and so he, he was called up late last year in 2019. I do think, I think that's what kind of put him over the edges. He had that time to see what was like. He got a good amount of at bats. I feel like because he was in the majors for that like month or two is why he had a better 2020 year than Luis did. Yeah, I agree. It's strictly it's because a big of transition. That. Yeah. Yeah, and it's strictly because of that. And again, I'm not trying to bash Luis Robert. He's probably my favorite White Sox player, and I don't, I don't really like the White Sox because I'm a Cubs fan. So. But I do think he's a very fun player to watch. And I think I do think once Trout retires, he could be the best player in the league eventually. And but I still feel like in terms of rookie years, I feel like Kyle Lewis definitely had the better one. Yeah, I mean it's interesting. I feel like he gets like a lot of hate and like a lot of love. He's kind of like Zion, like just like a player who's like so overpowered at their position, but gets so much hate and so much love. But I think definitely over the next few years, you know they're bringing in all these international players. They just signed the number one international prospect Cespedes. And I think just, they know how to like keep a good team with good chemistry and bring in guys from the same country or Cuba or wherever they're from. And I just think he's going to have a great time playing here. Okay, okay. So kind of go in depth in the White House. I feel like they have one of the best futures. I think both teams have great futures. Um, who I really like is Nick Magidal on the White Sox. He, I said Luis might be my favorite white side. No, it's definitely Nick Magical. I think he's going to easily be the best second baseman in a few years to come. Yeah, I love that guy. I mean, he got called up last year. He batted, I think, 340 and like 100 at-bats in short season. I mean, you can't really ask much more out of it. You'll be lucky to see him hit a home run. He's, he's like 5'6". He's just there to hit contact. And if, if you watch a game, he'll go four for five, five for five every night with four singles. He's just so consistent. He's so fast. I can't hit him. Mm-hmm. He reminds me a lot of a uh, young Jose Altuve, and I think he's going to be better than Altuve ever was. I think he yeah. he's one of my favorite prospects to watch. Number one second base prospect in the entire league. I, I have high hopes for him. Yeah, I mean, those are the guys you get slept on. Like, guys who don't hit home runs, like pitchers, you don't really look at that. And I just feel like in a real season, if he played 162 games and got 500 at-bats, if he hit 340, I mean, that would look really good for him. I mean, Mm -hmm. I I see a lot of people compare him to, like, Ichiro. I know you're a Mariners fan. Just, like, a guy who will walk up to the plate and get on base four out of five times. It's really good. Mm Mm-hmm. And especially what's good about him just getting on base is he should probably be one of your one or two battles. And then that brings up Luis or Edwin Crossino or Jose Ray to just, like, get that home run or get that deep line drive to score him. And another reason why I expect him to do well and want him to do well is I do have this uh, auto of him out of 10. So I'm hoping the value goes up because I want him to be play very well. Yeah, I got the opportunity to meet him uh, last January in 2020 before COVID. I got to meet him with my friends, and he's a really nice guy. He signed autographs for everyone. And, like, if you met him in person, you'd realize, like, how small of a guy he is, like an underdog. He's, like, maybe 5'5 five, five or 5'6, five, and it's really cool to see those smaller guys in the league because it kind of proves a point. You don't have to be a huge 6'3 built guy to make the MLB. You can be any size. Mm-hmm. I agree. I fully agree with that. And again, I don't want to get too much off topic, but I do feel like I do think the White Sox, they're my dark horse for this year, 2021, for the AL at least. But I do not, I think, net, I don't ha- even have them winning the division this year. I see them falling back by a game or two. But then next year, so in 2022 to like 2025, I expect them to win the division. Each yeah, year, it, year. it's looking and, good. I mean, my way too early prediction for 2022 is the White Sox will win the World Series. 
think so? Uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to make it this year. I feel like, again, Nick Madrigal and a lot of the team is still young, including Louise. Tim Anderson's still kind of young. Like, I just don't feel like that team is – it's in a good place, but also a not great place with Jose Abreu is he is aging, and he's probably your best player. But you also have a lot of young studs coming up. So, like, do you want to go push now with Abreu or wait for your own players to develop? That's the one bad thing I see about the White Sox. I mean, yeah, but, like, what's interesting about that is, like, age is just a number. Like, you look at Nelson Cruz on the Twins. He's 39, and he's still batting 310, hitting 40 home runs. And, well, he's 39. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Abreu's 33. He didn't get to the league till he was 27 from Cuba. So he was in his prime when he came over here. And I, I think it's just really interesting to see all play out. I mean, they've already got number 11 prospect in the league, Andrew Vaughn. He's a first baseman. So once a brave has to go, he'll fill in. I, I just think that's what puts them over the top. They've got backups in the minors for every position to fill in. And they're bringing in all these players. They got, uh, who's the pitcher? Lance Lynn, Adam Eaton. They're just bringing in all these guys to fill in the spots. Liam Hendricks, the best reliever. I just, I think they're going to be really good this in the next few years. I agree, I agree. And I kind of forgot about Vaughn. I, what I think they should do in, like, two years is move Abreu at 35, move him to DH, make him be someone kind of like Cruz, who's there at DH, and then play Vaughn at first. I, I forgot that they had him. Mm -hmm. So, um, thank you all for watching. Um. Make sure to subscribe and make sure to follow Dylan on Instagram at Cards and Coin 14. He uh, runs a very successful card account. And so if you're ever interested in cards, make sure to check him out. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on today, Justin. Thanks for coming on. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.